I was just wondering, you know, well, when people put gas or oil in their boats or cars, you know, so they can move around, do they ever stop to think about where the gas or the oil comes from? Huh? Do you know that some of it comes from way down under the ocean? Yeah. Here, I'll show you. Come with me. See, if you were to go straight out here, right out the harbor for miles and miles, you'd bump into these big things called oil rigs. Oh, they're a very important job. The only thing is, the oil rigs know it, see? Every now and then, they start to think that they're just a little more important than the other boats and ships. Oh, we had an oil rig named Tex in here for repairs a while ago. Well, that big fella got into trouble here in the harbor. And it wasn't that long ago. The giant oil rig had arrived in the middle of the night, back from a job way out on the ocean. Theodore didn't know much about oil rigs, and he found them a, a little frightening. They were so big, so, so tall, so completely different from any vessels he'd ever seen here in the big harbor. But George laughed and told him not to worry. Those rigs are big, all right, he said. But don't worry. I know them well. They all ask for me when they come in here. George, I want you to move that oil rig closer to the shore, announced the dispatcher. And George looked at Theodore as if to say, eh, well, I told you so. And take Theodore along with you, finished the dispatcher. Right away, Theodore began to worry. That oil rig looked awfully big. And George could be touchy about towing George's way. He was worried he'd make a mistake and then George would lose his temper. Uh, maybe a bigger tug would be better, he said, trying to use his most helpful voice. Follow me, Theodore, said George. I'll show you everything you need to know about oil rigs. Just don't get in the way. As they got closer to the giant oil rig, George was chuckling away. Oh, yes, they always ask for me. That's because I'm so big and strong. We'll be swapping stories with this big fella in no time, continued George. Just you watch, Theodore. Morning, Tex. The big oil rig only stared a mighty stare down at the two tugs. Tex? Tex, we're going to move you to a better spot in the harbor, called George. Now, what do you want? Tex drawled. He had a deep, slow voice that didn't sound very friendly at all. It made Theodore even more uncomfortable than before. Don't need no little tugs to move me, said Tex. I can do that just fine myself. Then he started up his engines. Well, George was silent. Theodore didn't know what to say either. I mean, this wasn't what he had expected at all. Finally, George spoke quietly. Uh, well, we'll, uh, we'll stand by then. You can go home for all I care, said Tex. Silly little puffers, you're only in the way anyways. Theodore wondered what he should do next. The giant rig was being very rude to George. Theodore didn't know if George was angry or, or sad. Look out of the way, snarled Tex, starting to move. Well, Theodore couldn't think about George anymore. He had to move fast before the big oil rig ran right into him. Now, as soon as George and Theodore were back at their dock, Fodak was eager to find out what it was like to work with the oil rig. Did he tell you lots of stories about the ocean? Asked Fodak. Oh, he was pretty tired, said George. But we figured we'd better let him get some rest. Uh, he wanted us to stay, but... Theodore stared at George. Why, that wasn't true at all. I guess George gave you a good lesson about moving oil rigs, eh, Theodore? Said Fodak. Theodore didn't know what to say. I mean, after all, he, he, he never wanted to tell a lie, but if he told Fodak about how badly the oil rig had treated George, George was likely to get upset again. Ah, uh, said Theodore, well, the, uh, I've certainly never met anyone like him before. Well, that was true enough, thought Theodore sadly. I've just been told a storm is coming, the dispatcher announced. George, make sure the Texas anchor cables are firmly in place. Theodore was towing Bobby Barge to his dock before the storm when he saw George idling near the oil rig. While he watched, George cleared his throat and said, <clears throat> There's a big storm coming. Do you need any help with your anchors? Oh, you again, said Tex, cutting off George. 
Why don't you just run along now? I don't need your help. I got more important things to do than chatter with every little tub who just floats on by. Tub? cried George. I'm the strongest tugboat in the big harbor. When you go for your fill of oil, where do you think it comes from, huh? It comes from big fellas like me that stay out at sea all alone for months at a time in all kinds of weather. So I don't need some little tug and tow truck's help in this little old harbor now. Well, George felt terrible. Ships and oil rigs were always happy to have him help them. Not Tex. And you know something? For a moment, George wondered if Tex was right. Maybe he wasn't a useful tugboat after all. It looks like that oil rig is still being mean to George, Bobby, said Theodore. As usual, Bobby didn't say anything. Barges are so nice and quiet, thought Theodore. We must be sure all the ships in the harbor are safely tied up before the storm, the dispatcher was saying. What's wrong with George? whispered Hank to Fodok. He had noticed that George seemed very sad floating off by himself. I don't know, said Fodok, glancing at the gathering clouds. He just got back from telling that big oil rig about the storm. That oil rig is only a bundle of rods and rails, said Theodore. Fodick was surprised with how upset Theodore seemed to be about the oil rig. Tugboats always do what's best for any ships on the water, Theodore, said Fodick. No matter what kind they are. Theodore sighed. He hoped the big oil rig would soon go back out to sea again. It's going to be a big storm, said Emily, shivering. You can feel it in the wind. <laughs> Theodore had been told to check again that all the barges were safe at their docks before the storm arrived. On his way back, Theodore had to pass close to Tex. He noticed that one of Tex's big anchor cables was worn and weak. If it broke in the storm, Tex might be hurt or even smash into other ships in the harbor. Theodore remembered the way Tex had treated George, and he really didn't want to talk to the big rig. But then Theodore remembered what Fodak had said. Tugboats always do what's best for any ships, no matter what. Tex, you've got a worn anchor cable, and we're going to have a storm. Do you think it'll be OK? Listen, little puffer, replied Tex. I rode out hurricanes on a wide open ocean on these here anchor cables. I bet you've never even been out on ocean. Oh, no, I haven't, sir, admitted Theodore. Well, you just mind your own business then, drawled Tex. Well, Theodore didn't like being spoken to that way. He was so upset, he just turned and headed for home. The wind was getting stronger and stronger. George was by himself when Theodore returned to the Great Ocean Dock. I saw you talking to Tex out there, said George, still grumpy. Oh, I suppose he's your friend now. Well, that made Theodore sad. I mean, he'd only been trying to help, and now George seemed to be nasty to him. We have an emergency, announced the dispatcher. One of the anchor cables on the oil rig's cable has broken, and he's in danger. He might even drift out of control. George, you must put a line on the rig, he continued. Leave immediately. What would George do, wondered Theodore. Tex had been so rude to George. Hmm, well, on my way, called George, gunning his engines. Do something and fast, cried Tex. Hang on tight, yelled George, hoping Tex could hear him through all the wind. But before George could start to pull, the wind twisted Tex around. With all the wind and waves, another one of Tex's anchor cables broke with a loud snap. Help, called George. Help, Theodore, help. Theodore couldn't believe it. He thought George was angry with him, but now George was asking for his help. He went as fast as he could. 
Off in the distance, Benjamin Bridge loomed over the water. Quick! yelled Tex. He was headed right for Benjamin. Of course, Benjamin couldn't move out of the way. If Tex wasn't stopped, there would be a terrible crash. Tex and George were swirling in the storm, getting closer and closer to Benjamin. Benjamin was getting scared. Turn back! Turn back! He yelled. Theodore quickly saw what he had to do. Oh, no! cried Tex. I'm gonna crash! Theodore had his lines around the big legs of the rig in a flash. And then he went right underneath Tex. Well, a bigger tugboat couldn't, wouldn't have fit under there. But Theodore is so small and fast and nimble, he pulled as hard as he had ever pulled before, trying to stop Tex from twirling around. Theodore could almost feel Benjamin behind him. Pull, little guy, cried Tex. Hurry, cried Benjamin. Theodore was pulling so hard, it was beginning to hurt. It was working. Tex had stopped moving. Now George could pull Tex in a straight line with all his might. George let out three mighty blasts of his horn, and three again. Good tugging, Theodore, he yelled. Theodore gave three happy toots in return. Well done, George, he said. And Benjamin Bridge was pretty happy, too. After they got back to Texas Place in the harbor, the storm was almost over and both tugs felt great. Thanks, Theodore, said George, still tired from all his work. I'd have been really stuck without you. He took a couple more deep breaths. You know, Theodore, you look small, but you're really as brave as the biggest of us. And thanks a bunch from up here, said Tex. Maybe sometimes I am a little too big for these here bumpers, continued the big rig. And now I know I'd have been just a bunch of rods and rails without both of you. You know, you're both big fellas to me, said Tex. This all reminds me of a little old story I heard one time down in the Gulf of Mexico. Tex found out that even big fellas like himself needed a little help from our tugboats from time to time. We could have told him that, huh? Well, he had lots of great stories in the tugboats, and he became real good friends. You know, I thought I heard a little squeak over here in this door hinge a while ago. I'm going to put a little oil on it. There. That's it. Well, thanks for visiting us here in the big harbor, and we'll see you all again next time. Bye-bye. Theodore. He's a tugboat and a friendly tugboat too. A friendly tugboat too. Oh, Theodore likes to do the things that friendly tugboats do. Pushing and a pulling in the great big harbor in the great big world is so much fun. So many brand new things to discover. Waking with the sun, gotta get the job done. Oh, Theodore and Emily. Oda, Hank, and George, and the harbor master, too. This will be great. Oh, hello. Come look at this. Look here. Do you see this? This is my old uniform from back in the days when I was captain of my own ship. 
Oh, I love this uniform. I'm gonna try it on right now. Ah. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It doesn't, doesn't seem to fit me anymore. Maybe I got a little bigger over the years, huh? Maybe if I try pushing and squeezing, that'll do it. Uh. <laughs> you know, pushing and squeezing is not gonna do it. You know, Hank could have told me about that. Yeah, you see, Hank felt like everyone in the big harbor was pushing and pushing and squeezing and squeezing him. This was just the other day. Now, he was very upset about that. But then something magical happened. Let me tell you about it. It was a big, bright, beautiful summer day in the big harbor. All the tugs were still asleep. All except for Hank. Hank was up early and almost bursting his bumpers with excitement over all the wonderful things he wanted to do today. He felt happier than happy. Theodore was up now. Theodore, Theodore, called Hank, and he nuzzled him a little just to make him extra awake. Do you want to see who can be first to the oil pumps? No, Hank, replied Theodore. I'm, I'm still sleepy. Oh, replied Hank. Oh, I'm sorry, Theodore. Well, George was up because his engines were already rumbling. Hank hurried over to George. George, George, he shouted. George, guess what? The work meeting doesn't start for nine whole minutes. Do you want to visit Blue Nose with me? Hank, your anchor is dangling again, rumbled George. Oops, said Hank. I, I thought I tucked it in, but what, what, do you want to visit Blue Nose with me? No, replied George. Well, Hank floated back to his dock to wait for the dispatcher to begin the morning work meeting. Maybe, thought Hank, the dispatcher will have a really great job for me today. We have a big oil tanker arriving soon, said the dispatcher. Theodore, Emily, and George, proceed to the harbor entrance. Now, Hank thought that bringing in an oil tanker would be lots of fun. Oh, can I help too, he said. The dispatcher turned to Hank. No, Hank, he said. But I do have a job for you. Bonavista Barge is a load of bumpers. I would like you to take her around the harbor and replace the broken bumpers on the docks. That is all. Well, replacing broken old bumpers wasn't the kind of job Hank had been hoping for, but Hank set off with his sunniest smile. Well, maybe his second sunniest smile. As Hank went to get Bonavista Barge, he felt the sunshine on his smokestack and the warm water tickle his hull. I bet the rest of the day will be greater than great, he said to himself. Just then, Hank saw Fodak floating along with his serious safety patrol face. Fodak, Fodak, Hank called. Yes, Hank, Fodak said. What is it? Do you want to race to Bonavista Barge, said Hank. No, Hank, replied Fodak. I'm very busy now. And with that, Fodak went on his way. No, 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 no. To Hank, it seemed like well, that was all anybody had been saying to him ever since he woke up. Hank floated there, alone in the middle of the busy harbor. All of a sudden, the sunshine didn't seem so bright. The water not quite as warm. But then, just as suddenly, Hank smiled again. I bet Bonavista Barge will want to do things I want to do. Sure enough, Bonavista was waiting with a big load of bumpers when Hank came hurrying along. In no time at all, Hank tied his tow line onto Bonavista and began to pull. Bonavista! Bonavista! said Hank. Would you like me to take you the long way around today? That way we can see lots of things. No, Hank, replied Bonavista. I'm hot, oh, and these bumpers are heavy. Let's, let's just get our work done. Hank couldn't believe his ears. A barge had said no to him. Hank could feel all the no's everyone had said to him, building up inside like 
hot steam in a kettle. It's not fair, he shouted to the whole harbor. No one wants to do what I want to do. Well, I don't want to move dumb old bumpers. And I don't want to work today. And I don't even want to be a tugboat anymore. Now, all the other tugboats who were heading off to work heard Hank blow his stack. And they couldn't believe it. I've never seen Hank lose his temper before, said George. What's the matter with him, said Emily. I'll find out, said Theodore. And he set off right away to talk to his friend. Hank, called Theodore. Why did you yell like that? What's the matter? Nothing, replied Hank quietly. I just want to be by myself. Are you sure that's what you want? Theodore said. But Hank just stared at his anchor. This wasn't like Hank at all. Theodore returned to the other tugboats. Hank won't tell me what's the matter, he said, worried. I'll find out what's the matter with Hank, said George in his biggest voice. I'll go too, said Fodok. Hank was just beginning to replace broken bumpers when George and Fodok rumbled up. There seem to be plenty of broken bumpers to replace today, said Fodok thoughtfully. Hank didn't answer. So, Fodok went on, everything uh, shipshape. Uh, your oil's not overheating, is it? No, replied Hank. Well, good. That's good, said Fodok. Does your hull hurt? Maybe there are barnacles in your bilge water. I don't think so, said Hank. Hank, said George, who was beginning to lose his patience. Why did you shout like that in the middle of the harbor? What is the matter with you? Nothing, replied Hank. I just want to be by myself. Well, grumbled George, who really didn't know what else to say. Just, um, just do your best. And with that, George and Fodok turned and headed back to the other tugboats. Hank wants to be by himself, announced George. Heat rash and barnacles, most likely, added Fodok. Theodore gazed out towards Hank. Hank never wants to be by himself, he said. Theodore was getting more and more worried about his friend. I'll go talk to him after we've finished work, said Emily, trying to be helpful. Just as Hank finished replacing broken bumpers, Emily appeared. I'm finished work too, said Emily. Would you like to come with me to visit some of my favorite places around the harbor? Okay, said Hank, but he didn't really sound too excited. Hank, are, are you upset about something, said Emily. Oh, I don't know, replied Hank. Did someone make you angry, asked Emily. This time, Hank didn't say anything. Look, said Emily suddenly. There's Bedford Bowie. Would you like to race me to him? Oh, um, you go ahead, Emily, said Hank quietly. I can't race by myself, Emily frowned. She was beginning to lose her patience with Hank. Hank, she said finally, what is the matter with you today? Oh, I just want to be by myself, Emily, said Hank. Then, then be by yourself, replied Emily. Well, she didn't mean to sound angry with Hank. She was really upset at herself for not being able to make him feel better. Hank watched Emily sail off. He knew he kept saying he wanted to be by himself, but somehow it didn't make him feel very good when Emily left. In fact, it made him feel even worse. A little while later, the tugs returned to the Great Ocean Dock. George was just puffing up some smoke and rumbling his engines to begin telling about one of his adventures when Fodok interrupted him. It seems, said Fodok, kind of quiet around here today. The other tugs agreed. It was as if something was missing. Hank's not here, said Emily suddenly. You're right, said George. Did you talk to Hank, Emily, said Theodore. I tried, answered Emily, but he just wanted to be by himself. Something is definitely bothering Hank, 
Theodore said. And the other tugboats agreed. But what can we do, said Emily. We've tried everything to cheer him up. Theodore noticed the tugboats had all moved closer to each other, the way they always did whenever they were talking about something really important. And suddenly, he had an idea. I know something we could try, said Theodore slowly. A little while later, Theodore slowly floated out to the sandy beach. He knew that that was Hank's special quiet place. And sure enough, when Theodore peeked around the bend, he saw Hank just floating quietly by himself along the beach. Hi, Hank, he called. Oh, hi, Theodore, replied Hank in a soft voice. You're having a bad day, huh, Hank, said Theodore after a moment. I'm having a really bad day, Theodore, said Hank. I have an idea, said Theodore. And Hank said nothing. I think you might really like this idea, continued Theodore. We need to go over there, said Theodore. Over there, said Hank. The two tugs floated slowly around the bend. And then Hank saw all the other tugboats, and they were smiling at him. Hank was very surprised. Hi, everybody, he said. What are you all doing here? We're going to give you a tug hug, said Theodore. A tug hug, said Hank. What's that? Well, replied Theodore, it goes like this. The other tugboats all formed a circle around Hank. And then, really, really close to him until their bumpers were all nuzzling together. This is a tug hug, said Theodore. Well, Hank began to giggle. I really like tug hugs, he said. And everyone began to laugh and toot their whistles with glee. And just like a dark cloud blowing away and the sun coming out again, Hank felt just the way he'd felt when he'd woken up that morning, happier than happy. Thank you, Theodore, said Hank. I feel much better now. I do too, Hank, replied Theodore. I do too. We all do, said the others. You know, it really was almost magical, the way that a, a gentle hug made Hank feel so much better. And Hank found out that even though nobody wanted to do the things that he wanted to do that day, his friends still loved him. You know, Hank's story has given me an idea. I think if you're really, really gentle, why, things just fit like magic. Just as snug as a tug hug. Well, thanks for visiting us here in the Big Harbor, and we'll see you all again next time. Bye. He's a tugboat and a friendly tugboat, too. A friendly tugboat, too. Oh, Theodore. Likes to do the things that friendly tugboats do. Pushing and a pulling in the great big harbor. In the great big world, there's so much fun. So many brand new things to discover. Waking with the sun, gotta get the job done. Oh, Theodore and Emily. Photoc, Hank and George and the harbor master, too.